In this presentation, we're going to be looking at the concepts and theory behind the Lionhead Door Knocker project. Now this really is an overview of the complete process starting and finishing a project. We'll be looking at a method that I find very useful with any project and using that we'll be looking at methods of research and how we can develop the design through reflection. And so using this I'm going to show you my journey right from the start all the way to the end creating this functional lion head door knocker that you can see here. And so we're going to start by looking at the concepts of the project and we'll be looking at this creative process model. We'll be discussing how we can start a project, methods of research, effective reviewing of our work and how we can create iterations to develop our designs. We'll then move on and think about the theory side of things, so we'll be looking at the software and we'll be thinking of ways that we can draw in the software and how we can create effective vectors for effective modelling results and then we'll be discussing the modelling tools and what each one does to help us have an understanding in advance of the types of vectors that we need to create. So let's talk about this creative process. Now the creative process is my preferred method or my way of working. It's not an actual thing, it's just the way that I work. Now when I start any project, I always start by doing some research. And so we'll be discussing methods of research shortly. And when I'm doing my research, or if I've found something that's inspired me, I then move ahead with my project, and then I make something from that research, or whatever it is that has inspired me. Once I have a finished piece or a final part, I then take a step back and then I start to reflect on what it is that I've made. And in that reflection stage, this is where I start to think about how I could change my finished piece if I had more time or if I was to do a project again. And so we'd go back and work through the cycle again, researching, making and reflecting. And so this creative process is a very useful model for us to use with any project. And this simple three-step approach of researching, making and reflecting, which you'll see shortly throughout this presentation, should help us to strengthen our work. So let's look at how we start a project. Now when we start a project, we're either one of three options. We either have a brief to begin with, and so we have quite a good idea of what our end result needs to be. Or we have an idea, and that could be a vague idea, to a very solid idea of what it is that you want to create. Or you could be a blank canvas where you don't really have any idea of what it is you want to make. Regardless which start point you are, you're going to benefit from your research. So let's look at research methods. One method of research is primary research. Now primary research is real life research. It's looking at uh, the physical things that are around you, what you see in everyday life. And you can enhance that by visiting places. So you could go and visit places such as museums, galleries or shows uh, in order for you to get some inspiration. Other ways is by looking at objects, so just looking at the objects that are around you. For example, you could look at furniture or toys. And then there's architecture, so looking at structures that are around you. And all of these various things in your primary research should spark some inspiration. And so it's a good idea to always have your camera on you at the same time. And so you can take photos of things that inspire you, and then you can look back at those at a later date. So then we can move on, we can think about another way that we could research. And that's by looking at secondary research. What I mean by secondary research is research that has already been written. So that's looking at things such as books for inspiration or magazines. And then of course there's online and there's an absolute wealth of information available to us online. One of the things that I tend to do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis is use um, search engines and do image searches. That's where you put a term in and you select the option to do an image search in which you're then shown lots of different images according to that term that you searched. And so I find that that helps me to get inspiration where I'll simply take an image and then I'll maybe save it to my computer to look at at a later date. 
Another option is by looking at um, applications. Now there's a really cool application called Pinterest. Now Pinterest is basically like an online scrapbook. And so what it enables us to do is to search for something, like you can see in the image here, I've searched the terms CNC projects and relief, in which I have lots of results purely just of images using those search terms. If there's an image that I like, I can take that and I can pin it to one of my boards, which is the same as taking an image in a magazine, cutting that out and putting it in a scrapbook. And then there's apps such as Instagram, which allow users to share their photographs and we can search terms in that application. So what do Vectric have to offer in terms of secondary research? To start with, we have the Vectric Forum. You can access this by going to forum.vectric.com. Here, it enables users to post up questions or to post up images of what it is they've created. And this is a great source of inspiration, as we can see all different sorts of users from all different levels, from beginners to advanced, and see what they're making. We also have the Vectric Lab site, and you can access that by going to vectriclabs.blogspot.co.uk. Here, this is where we create projects and then we blog about them. And so sometimes we offer you the files, sometimes we don't, but we do give a little blog entry of some of the things that we came across when creating the part. And so hopefully that will provide you with a little bit more inspiration. And we also have case studies. Now case studies can be accessed via the Vectric website or if you subscribe to the Vectric newsletter you'll see those come through every month. And this is basically an article where we talk to a customer looking at how they're utilising Vectric software. And so we look at people, all sorts of people from hobbyists to furniture makers, stage set designers, teachers, sign makers, cabinet makers and many, many more. And so these really are inspiring articles and it enables us to see what users like you are making. And then we have Vectrix Project of the Month um, and you can access the Project of the Month via the website or again you could subscribe to the newsletter so you can see those come through every month. Uh, this is basically a project that one of our customers creates on a monthly basis uh, where we provide the files along with a step-by-step -step guide of how to create the part. All sorts of projects available here, um, so you should go and check those out. They're a great source of inspiration. If not, it's just a great way for you to get using your machine and getting more practice in. Then there are other CNC websites such as CNC Zone uh, and then there's the router forums as well. So whatever router you have, they usually have a forum available. And again, this is a great place for you to get information or even inspiration to see what other users are up to. And so taking inspiration from all of these various sources, it's all about creating your own versions. And so that's our research stage complete. So let's just have a little recap. So we looked at primary research. Primary research is the physical research. It's the research that is out there. So it's about going to places to get inspiration, such as museums, galleries, or shows. There's also looking at your surroundings, so looking at things like objects or furniture. We then have secondary research. Now secondary research is the research that is written. So that's looking at things like books or magazines for inspiration. And then there's online, so we could look at different search engines. We could look at applications to get inspiration. And we could also look at what Vectric has to offer. So we have the Vectric Forum, along with the Vectric Lab site. We have uh, various other pieces of inspiration, such as case studies and projects of the month. And so realising the various different options for you to research or for you to gain inspiration is just about customising this for your own benefit. So let's have a look at how I started the Lionhead Door Knocker project. Now my design brief was simply to create a modelling example for the user group meeting. And so with that in mind, I knew I was working with something that I had to model. 
Now, things that I like to model um, include things such as uh, symmetrical shapes, I like stylized look of things, and I like working with faces. And so these three key things uh, are something that I took ahead and then went on to do my research. So I went ahead and went straight to the internet and did my secondary research. So what I did was I used a search engine and I simply typed in various search terms and used the image results option. So for example, the images that you can see here, I typed in Venetian mask, green men, gargoyle, angel, cherub, lion head, dragon. And I'd get various results from which I'd save out images that I like the look of or images that inspired me. So I'd always have those to refer to when narrowing down my research. And so from this idea of stylized faces, what I really started to like the idea of was the lion head. And so taking that further, I took to the search engine again and I typed in the term lion head door knocker or door knocker and lion head and then did an image search result. And again, I had lots of hundreds of images come up in which I'd save out various images like the ones that you can see here to use as inspiration for when I move ahead with my project. So at this stage, I felt that I had quite a substantial amount of research that I could use and I could go ahead and move forward with the project. So moving forward, means that we start to make something from our research. And so here you can see a sort of blend between the two stages. So looking at our research and making from that. So there's quite an overlap between uh, what we research and what we make. And whilst we're making, we're sort of referring back to that research. And so here I started to just draw up several different sketches um, from the research. So looking at uh, the research that I've got, so looking at the shapes and trying to come up with my own versions of the lion head. Now in terms of drawing, you don't have to do a sketch, you can simply take the research that you've got and sort of chop it up and create a collage in which you can then trace from that. So you can take elements from different examples, so you could take the ears from one, the mane from another, in order for you to create um, your own version of the lion head. And so with those sketches, I went with the middle sketch and then I took that straight into the software and I started working in there, creating vectors, and then I ultimately created the model. And this is the part that I created. And I was fairly happy with what I had achieved here. Now as I had the luxury of time, I was able to step back and take a look at the part that I've made and start reflecting on what I've made. Now when I'm reflecting, I'm reflecting on what I've made through my research. So you can see I've pulled up the images here of what I used initially as reference material. And so when I'm reflecting, I'm always reflecting on what I've made through my research. And so you can see there's quite an overlapping area here where we reflect through research. And so one of the key things that I noticed um, between my reference material and the model that I've created was that even though the reference material, each one of those lion heads had quite a stylistic look, which is what I'm going for, the mane itself, if we take a look at each one of those manes, you can see that it has quite a natural look. We can see we've got waves in there, we can see the individual strands. And that's something that I was missing uh, from my model, the part that I designed. Now, as I said, I was happy with the model that I created. However, I felt I'd like to improve that a little bit better and see if I can make the mane a little bit more natural. So what I did then was I drew up a new design where I ensured that I had a natural looking mane. And then I took that into the software to create the model that you can see on the right hand side. And so we can see that the mane has those waves flowing through. It's more natural looking than the mane that we created in version one. And so with that, again, working through this creative process, I move on and I think about how we reflect on what we've made. And so that requires me to put up my reference material or my research material. So again, there's that overlap of reflecting on our, what we've made through our research. 
Now, as I said, I was fairly happy. However, the more that I kept looking at the research, I realized something wasn't quite right with my model. So just taking a step back and looking back at version one and thinking about how I used the same brief and I've got two totally different outcomes, this is where I started to really think about what's different between the models that I'm creating and the reference material. So this required me to play a game of spot the difference. So here I pulled out my research material and really took a long hard look at what was different between my research material and the two versions uh, of the lines that I've created that you can see on the left hand side. Now one thing I noticed was the forehead. If we take a look at how I've modelled um, my lion heads, you can see that uh, I have what appears to be um, eyebrows. Okay, now if we take a look at our research material, you can see that we don't really have eyebrows here. We have what looks like rather large lumps for the forehead. So that's one thing for me to bear in mind when creating my next iteration. Another thing I noticed through looking at that reference material is the shape in which the lion heads are sat in. You can see it's in quite a circular shape. And if the reason for that is that we can see the mane is running underneath the chin here, and it's also running underneath the chin in this example here, along with the two at the bottom. And that's something that I'm evidently missing in my models. I have no mane running below the chin in either of those. So I feel that that could greatly improve the model that I create if I included the mane running underneath the chin area. One final thing I noticed was the face shape. If we take a look at the face shape in an, our reference material, you can see we have quite a solid shape that goes round and then it comes in at the snout, round, comes in at the snout, and round, and it comes in at the snout here. And it's something that's not so obvious in my case, so that's something that I'm going to bear in mind when I create my next iteration. So what I did was I took all of that information, thought about all the things that are different between the models that I created and the reference material that I was using in order for me to create my third version. And so this is the sketch that I created. And so here you can see that I've really took on board all of those different key elements that we spoke about. So initially thinking about the main, so we've got lots of strands running through there. We've got the main running underneath the chin, which we spoke about this circular shape here. You can see that I've increased this forehead shape that we've got there, and that's reflecting on the research material that we were using there. And so with this sketch, I was happy to go ahead and use this as my final version. And so it's at this stage where I started to think about how to manufacture the part and I had a bright idea to make this a functional part rather than just a low relief model. So I went and did a little bit of research and I looked at an example of a rosette that's assembled through layers like you can see here. And the way that it's stacked together is by using this keyway mechanism. This is just a simple pocket that's pocketed onto the base shape. So you can see this area is raised. And then on the underside of this middle layer here, we have the same pocket and so the two will fit together. And so to help me understand how I could use this process in order for my lion head door knocker to work, I simply got an image of one of the lion heads and chopped it up in order for me to sort of visualize how I could put this part together, where I decided that would create this using a base shape, would have a face shape that's separate and the handle will sit in between the chin and this flat area of the face here. I thought that's the most appropriate way that this could work. And so taking that further, this is when we start to think about how we draw this in the software. And to help me understand how I'd draw this up in the software, I took to creating a maquette. Now a maquette is just simply um, a, a model. So it's a, a little model that I've done here made up of super sculpy material. 
It's just basically like a clay and I created a little mock-up version of how I could approach this model in the software. So you can see here I've got this flat base shape with this recessed area here. I have a, s a single face and that face is going to sit on top of the lion and we're going to have our handle running through this recess area on the base shape. And so in theory that's how the part will be put together. And so at this stage we'd then take our sketch and we'd import it into a session of Aspire and start drawing up the vectors for the lion head door knocker. So now we're going to discuss the software side of things. We're looking at the key concepts for effective vectors and components. We'll look at the modelling tools and seeing what sorts of shapes we can create from various vectors. We'll also be discussing how the quality of our vectors has a direct impact on the quality of our model. And then we'll also be looking at some of the ways in which we can draw in the software. So let's have a look at the modelling tools. Now it's a good idea to have some knowledge in advance of the types of shapes you can create using the three different modelling tools that we have available as this will help determine the types of vectors that you want to create at the start of your project. So it's a good idea to work through the tutorials and to generally get some practice, whether that's through the tutorials or through your own projects. One of the tools that we have available is called Create Shape. This allows us to assign a profile and an angle to any closed vector. The three profiles you can choose from are curved, angled or flat shapes. We then have the two rail sweep tool. The two rail sweep allows us to create a shape that's determined by its vector rails and a cross section that's swept through those two vectors. We also have the extrude tool. Now the extrude tool works in a similar fashion to the two rail sweep except this time we only use one vector rail so we just use a single rail in which we extrude a cross section along that vector. And we'll be using all three of these modelling tools in the modelling side of the Lionhead door knocker tutorial. Now if you've not used the modelling tools before then it's good to get some practice in. So ultimately practice helps you get better and so follow along with tutorials will help you do that along with creating your own projects. One of the key things to having a good quality model is by having good quality vectors to begin with. For instance, if we take a look at the images below, so we've got our vector here on the left, so this is our vector that we've drew up in the software. If we go into node edit mode, so we can take a look at that vector more closely where we can see the nodes and we can take a look at the spans in between each of those nodes, we can see we've got quite a jagged looking vector here. And so when we create a component from that, we're going to have a part that looks like this where we can see all of these uh, ridges coming through. And these ridges are being transmitted through this space here because of the quality of our vector. Now we can see we've got quite a lot of nodes in here. Now in order for us to create a better looking vector what we need to do is have smooth spans between each node. And So it could be a case of reducing the amount of nodes that we have in this particular case. So if I was to do that and we looked at maybe reducing the number of nodes that we've got and then ensuring that we have nice smooth flowing spans between node to node, we can ensure that we're going to have a good quality component like you can see here. We can't see anything being transmitted through here as we have nice smooth spans travelling between each node. So if I just go back so you can take a look at that again, you can see we've got lots of nodes and lots of uh, unsmooth spans between each one of those nodes and we can see that being transmitted through this component but reducing the nodes and really controlling, it's all about controlling the spans in between the nodes so as long as they're smooth uh, then you're going to get smooth results with your component. So that's something to always bear in mind when you're drawing up your vectors to create components. So now we can think about ways of drawing in the software. Now there's three common tools that I use uh, in the software. 
The first one is the polyline tool. Now the polyline tool enables us to create straight shapes which I can easily edit those using the node edit function to create smooth shapes like the one you can see on the right hand side there. We also have the draw curve tool. The draw curve tool enables us to create nice curved shapes like you can see there. And we also have draw shapes. So we can use any one of these to create the shape that you can see in the icon. Or we can even take those and edit them to create new shapes like you can see in the image in the bottom right hand corner. And then there are other ways to create vectors from vectors that we've already created. For instance, we could use the offset tool, or we could create a copy of a vector and then ultimately change the size of that to create a new vector. And so understanding the variety of drawing tools that we have available in the software will help you get through projects a lot quicker. And so if you haven't had a lot of experience in the drawing side of things, then it's a good idea to go and get some practice, watch the tutorials and work on your own projects. So now we're at the end of the presentation where we can now start to think about working through the tutorials. Now we have two tutorials, one is the Lionhead Doorknocker Drawing Tutorial and this focuses on bringing that sketch into the software and then looking at the vector drawing tools that we spoke about earlier. So let's just quickly summarise this presentation. So we started off by looking at the concepts behind this project. More importantly we looked at this model that I use, the creative process. And this model enables us to effectively do our research. From the research that we make, we then go and make something. So we make a product from the research. Taking that product, we take a step back and we start to reflect on the part that we've made through our research. And so using this process and where it overlaps, we can really benefit from the iterations that we make. And then we moved on and talked about the theory side of the software. So understanding the drawing and the modelling tools. We looked at ways of drawing in the software, so all of the different tools that we could use. We looked at how the quality of your vectors have a direct impact of the quality of your models that you create. And so we spoke about how we can create better looking models from those vectors. And then we spoke about benefiting from knowing what shapes you can create from the various modelling tools. And so having knowledge of what the drawing and the modelling tools do in advance will enable you to strengthen your work with quicker results. And that concludes this presentation. Thank you for watching.